<clears throat> Welcome to the uh, second part of the video that I'd like the youth for, like for the youth to see, and and this video is about the cost of following Christ. And the scripture I'll be reading comes from Luke chapter 14. I'll be reading verses 25 through 35, and it says this. Now great crowds were traveling with him, so he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, wanting to build a tower, doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, after he has laid the foundation and cannot finish it, all the onlookers will begin to make fun of him, saying, This man started to build and wasn't able to finish. Or what king, going to war against another king, will not first sit down and decide if he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If not, while the other is still far off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. In the same way, therefore, every one of you who does not say goodbye to all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Now, salt is good, but if salt should lose its taste, how will it be made salty? It isn't fit for the soil or for the manure pile. They throw it out. Anyone who has ears to hear should listen. Now, going back to Facebook and and by the way, I hope just because I'm pointing some of these things out that y'all don't delete me off of Facebook. You know, I kind of got sitting here thinking about that, and you know, like I said, I'm not going to be mentioning anybody's names and you know things like that because yes, I do realize that things that you do post really, you know, is your business. But uh, anyway, one of the uh, troubling things that that I've seen among some of the youth on my Facebook page is concerning uh, a very hot topic issue uh, these days in our country and it's the issue of homosexuality. Now for those of you who do know your Bible very well and for those of you who do study the Bible, the Bible is pretty clear on the issue of homosexuality. It says that homosexuality is wrong. Period. Now, I've worked with a, a lot of youth. Uh, let's see, I've I worked with about let's say about about 30, up to 30 youth uh, at, my, at my home church. Not all at one time, but a total amount of different people. And then I've worked with about 10, 10 or 12 youth uh, at the second church I was at in Waynesboro, Virginia. And, you know, I, what I try to do is I try to teach them exactly what the Word of God says. And, you know, first of all, you know, I do want to apologize, you know, to all the youth that I've taught you know, these past couple of years because, you know, even though I am passionate about God's Word and about living out your faith, I know my teaching sometimes, it may not seem like that to you. You know, I'm just the type of person that that's, you know, even keeled, so to speak, and my voice stays the same way, and, you know, this is just me, and this is just my personality. You know, I'm not like some of these other pastors, you know, that, that, you know, holler and scream in the pulpit and all that stuff. Most likely, you're not going to get that from me. I know uh, with the radical video, my voice ra rose up a little bit, but that's very rare, you know, for me. But I do want to apologize, you know, to the youth because I know some of the other youth leaders have told me not to worry about it or I'm doing good. But I'm kind of convicted by what my uh, preaching professor here at Southeastern uh, said, Dr. Aiken. He, he said that if you're teaching the Bible in a way that's boring, you know, to other people, 
then you're committing a sin. And, you know, the more I thought about that, you know, the more that I agree with it because we should be teaching from God's Word, you know, real passionately. And hopefully through these videos that I'm doing, I'll get better and better at that. You know, I don't mean to make excuses or anything, but, of course, probably part of that, too, is, you know, I don't get very many opportunities to preach or to teach. And then once I start feeling like I'm getting into that, that mode, then something happens to where I have to end up leaving. You know, whether I have to come back here to seminary or, or something else happens. But back to uh, the scripture here about counting the cost. Uh, what I was uh, referring to is, I happened to see a posting on, <clears throat> on my wall on Facebook from, from a few of the youth. And basically... They're, they were endorsing homosexuality. You know, they were saying things like, you know, don't judge them, you know, if they're happy and, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, when I saw that, my heart just kind of broke. You know, and, and as a pastor, it just it's real frustrating for me. I mean, I understand that not everybody is going to, you know, follow the Bible and all that. But, you know, when you see a majority of, of your youth doing that, or, you know, I'll pick another issue. I've seen a lot of youth that I've worked with before when they post things, you know, on, on Facebook, they have some of the nastiest and the foulest language I have ever seen. But yet they come to church and say they're Christians, you know. But the point I'm trying to make is this. If you want to be a true disciple of Christ, you really need to start acting like it. Now, in the scripture it says, you know, about... Uh, hating your father and mother and wife's children. You know, this scripture, it's not telling you to hate your parents or or to hate your kids or or hate your possessions, all that all that. What it's trying to say is that you should be putting Jesus first in your life before anything else. Is it alright to have friends? Yes, of course. Is it alright, you know, to collect some things? Yes, of course. I mean, I collect uh uh, Jeff Gordon stuff, you know, my favorite NASCAR driver is Jeff Gordon. I, you know, try to collect, you know, as much stuff as I can. Now, obviously, the past couple of years, I've been able to do that because I don't have the money to do it now. But, you know, that's that's something that, that I've done, you know, for a while. But what I try to do is I put Jesus first ahead of Jeff Gordon. And that's what, you know, the youth... You know, you guys have what y'all need to start doing. You're not just going, you know, to church to act holy for three hours or an hour or, or you know, however long you stay at church. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are making a commitment to Jesus for the rest of your life. I've seen too many times in my life people that accept Christ and then they never show up again or they never grow. And, you know, I know I can't stop everybody from doing that. But my passion is that I hope and pray whoever, you know, I'm a pastor, you know, for, whether it's youth or adults, that the majority of them that that I teach, I hope and pray that God's Holy Spirit would be on them when I teach and that they would go out here and, and live a Christian life. And, and the cost of Christ also in, includes standing up against issues like homosexuality and uh, abortion and, and, and those hot button issues. And yes, I will tell you ahead of time, when you stand up against some of those issues, you will lose some friends. 
and you will lose some respect. But you know what? Think about this way. I would rather be unpopular but go to heaven than, than to have everybody to like me here on earth but then I end up going to hell. This is a matter of life and death. And, and through these issues, God sometimes will open up an opportunity where you can witness for Christ. Now, what does Jesus say about people that, you know, that say they accept Him as their Lord and Savior, but then don't do nothing after that? Well, basically, you know, to make it simple, it's, He's saying that they're worthless. You know, if you're coming to church acting holy, and I'm not saying that, that all of you are doing that, by the way, so let, you know, let me just make that clear. But if you are doing something like that, but then you're going off to school and having a mouth of a sailor, or saying that homosexuality is right or abortion is right and, and all that other stuff and won't stand up for Christ, that's not being a disciple for Christ, that's conforming to the world. And Christ didn't call you to conform to the world. He called you to be apart from the world. And that's something that all of you need to think about. And yes, the gospel is going to offend some people. That's just a fact of life. And yes, there probably will be times that you might lose some friends. But you also have friends that are Christians as well. And I guarantee you that your Christian friends are a lot better friends than those of than those that you may hang around with that just lead you astray or lead you to do bad things. So I hope this video uh, has gotten you to, to think about a little bit about the cost of following Christ. Yes, when you do follow Christ, it is going to cost you something. Everywhere in the in the Bible, you see when 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 some of of, of the people in the Bible encountered God, it cost them something. You know, Jesus, it costed Jesus his life in order for us to have eternal life with him. And we need to be willing to sacrifice our own lives for him as well. That's something that took me a long time to figure out. And I'm not going to tell you I perfected it yet. There's still been a lot of times where I could have stood up for Christ and just didn't do it. But, but I feel like God is, is teaching me to do that better. And hopefully I'll get even, you know, a lot more better, you know, on, on following God. So, that's just something I want you to think about as well, along with the first video I just did. You know, God gives you opportunities to stand up for Him, and I urge you to take advantage of them. Because if you don't, then most likely nobody else will. Do you value your popularity or, or friendships or what have you over Jesus? If, if that is the case, it will come back to bite you in the end. Put Jesus first, and then everything else will fall into place. Your life may not be easier, but I guarantee you that God will bless you for it. So until next time, may God bless you, and I'll see you next time.